Welcome to I Learned a Thing in the Bathroom from Dollar Shave Club, where we explain something very complicated in mere minutes to occupy your brain while you shave. In this edition, we'll be answering the question, why do we listen to music? As explained by someone who sounds smart because he's British. No one's 100% sure why music is so important to humans. We just know that it is. When you hear a song you love, your brain gets flooded with dopamine, the same feel-good chemical related to motivation and reward that you get with food and sex. This is kind of weird, because unlike food and sex, there's no obvious evolutionary advantage to enjoying music. We know it's an ancient response, though. Music affects relatively recent sections of the brain to do with abstract decision-making, but it also activates much older sections involved with processing emotions. Clearly, music served some vital purpose in our past. Was it so cavemen had something to get jiggy to? We'll come back to that in a moment. Recent research suggests that the most important thing music did for our ancient ancestors was to help develop their imaginations. That does not sound like a very useful skill for creatures who were mostly just trying not to die in hostile jungles. It was actually an important survival skill for early humans. The research shows that most people are able to predict the likelihood of whether or not they'll like a new piece of music within seconds, basing this prediction on similar music they've heard before. This ability to predict a likely outcome by recognizing familiar patterns is one of the key things that sets us apart, indeed above, other animals. It allows us to essentially predict the near future in a meaningful way, and prepare for what dangers we imagine will likely be ahead. I would still like to hear more about caveman mood music. Of course you would. Archaeologists have found several rudimentary instruments dating back to Neolithic times, the oldest of which is known as the Dievj Babe flute, a flute carved from the leg bone of a cave bear. It's around 43,000 years old. Sweet! Do we know what they played on it? It was Wonderwall, wasn't it? No, the oldest known piece of music is called Hurrian Hymn No. 6, and it was written in the 14th century BC, around 3,400 years ago. The musical notation, inscribed on clay tablets, was excavated in Syria in the 1950s. Played on a nine-stringed lyre, a sort of small harp, it was a tribute to the Sumerian goddess Nikal. Because if there's one universal truth of humanity, it's that all the best songs are about women who are completely out of your league. So do other animals make music, or is it just us? Other animals certainly make sounds that we consider to be musical. There's birdsong, obviously, and certain species of monkeys have been known to beat hollow logs like drums. And of course, what hippie doesn't like listening to recordings of whale songs? But the question of whether any of these animals are creating these noises for the same reason we do, that is, they just like hearing them, is up for debate. Music, in all likelihood, is a more functional pastime for the lower animals, and it's normally just directly tied to mating. Yes, because no human being has ever started a band just to try and get laid. Tune in next time for more I Learned a Thing in the Bathroom. And in the meantime, head to dollarshaveclub.com for more podcasts and a big old pile of grooming products.